Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. So we've had one quiz that had math exercises on it. It was due Saturday. There's another one open now. It's due in five days or whatever the Saturday is from now. Any questions about any of that? Okay. Uh, so just as a reminder, we're going to have a quiz every week from now on. Okay. So last time we were talking about natural domain, and we're still talking about natural domain. So let's write that down. Natural domain is the set of all inputs for which the expression is defined. So for example, uh, x minus 5 divided by x minus 7, the natural domain is what? Uh, all numbers except 7. All numbers except 7. What what's what do we have against seven? It makes the denominator zero. Correct. So then that would cause a division by zero. What about five? Is five okay? Yeah. Yeah, five would be fine. The numerator is zero at five, but there's nothing in principle wrong with that. Just uh, the only time we have a problem is when the denominator is zero. Okay. <clears throat> Alternatively, here's a different example. How about uh, the square root of 3x minus 6? With the same prompt, I want to know what the natural domain is. Hmm, well. <clears throat> If you'll recall, not all numbers have a, have a square root. For example, what's the number that doesn't have a square root? Negative three. Negative three. There is no number that when you square it, you get negative three. There's no such number, no such real. Okay, so generally speaking, for square roots, for square roots, the argument, the thing being put into the square root must be non-negative argument must be non-negative. So what we need is we need this to be true. 3x minus 6 has to be greater or equal to 0. Whatever we plug in for x, that inequality must be true. So we could solve for x. How do we solve for x? Add 6 to both sides. So what I'm doing now um, there's a small chance that you're not familiar with this, but don't so don't worry about it. We'll we'll cover this in due time. But the majority of you should probably already have experienced this. So if we add six to both sides, then the new inequality would be three x greater or equal to six. Then what? Divide by three. <laughs> So we divide both sides by 3. The new left-hand side is x. The new right-hand side is 2. So which is to say that 2 is the smallest number you could plug in. You could plug in 2.1. You could plug in 2.1 million. But you couldn't plug in 1.9. That would not be acceptable. 
How about... How about... The cube root of 3x minus 6. Now what's the answer? All numbers. All numbers. So the natural domain is all x. Because remember that radicals change their behavior depending on the parity of the radical. So square root is which radical? Two. two. Radical two. Whereas this one is radical three. And the thing that makes them so remarkably different is that two is an even number while three is odd. So in particular, while there is not a square root of say negative 16, there isn't a square root for negative 16, how about is there a cube root for negative eight? Yeah, negative two. Negative two is the cube root of negative eight. Okay, so the answer is all x. So, three different responses. And what we want to do today is we want to find a common way to write all of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause considering natural domain for a moment and we're going to come up with a way to write all of these things and then we're going to circle back around and resume discussions of natural domain. Okay. <clears throat> Any question about this page? So. <clears throat> the notion that we need to make our discussion more fluent is the notion of an interval. So an interval is a contiguous subset of R, of the reals, which in a sense only raises the question, what is contiguous? So in particular, it's not a mispronunciation or, mis or misspelling of continuous, which is a different word. <laughs> it means a different thing. What does contiguous mean? quite so here's an example this is the, the in you know this is the most common example that most people ever hear is is you refer to the contiguous United States so when you're talking about the contiguous United States which states are you talking about not Alaska and Hawaii, not Alaska and Hawaii. Right, so there, there's 50 United States and the contiguous ones include all of, all of those except Alaska and Hawaii. So what does contiguous mean? They share a common ground. All right, common right. Border. So in, in, in a sense, sort of colloquially, it means touching. So the 48, the lower 48 states are said to be contiguous because if you select any two points in the contiguous United States, then in principle, maybe not in practice, but in principle, you could start at one place and walk to the other place without ever leaving the United States. That's not true if you select a point in Texas and a point in Alaska. It is not possible to walk from Texas to Alaska and never leave the United States. It's not possible. Similarly, it's not possible to start in Texas and begin walking and end up in Honolulu without leaving the United States. So contiguous means, literally, that given any two points, you can put your pencil <coughs> down and draw 
a path and never leave the set in question. That's what contiguous means. Okay, continuous mean, is a different matter. So, an interval is a conti contiguous subset. So now I'm going to write in three columns. Okay, there's it's three different ways to express intervals, and depending on the situation, one way is more helpful than the other. So the first way is algebraic. Algebraic. The second way is going to be called interval notation. And the third way, plot. So first, a less than x less than b. So an example of this is something like 2 less than x less than 6. So what I'm referring to is I'm referring to all the numbers between 2 and 6. So can someone give me uh, a, specific, a specific example of a number in here? 4. 4. 4 is in there. Can someone give me a specific example of a number which is not? 7. Not in there. Okay, is 2 in here? No. no. Because if you were to replace that x with a 2 and ask yourself, self, is 2 less than 2? It isn't. Okay. So, so here's some numbers that are in that set. 2, 3, 4, and 5. 2, 3, 4, and 5. Are there any other numbers in that set? Yeah, everything in between all those numbers too, right? So for example, 3 and 4 are in there. So is 3 and a half. So is pi. Contiguous. You draw your you you draw from 3 to 4. 3's in there, 4's in there, so is everything in between. Not just the integers. Not just the integers, all the numbers. Okay. The way that you denote this in interval notation is like is like this, so a to b, and for this specific example, 2 to 6. And the way that you draw this <coughs> as a plot is with open circle, and then a horizontal line, then an open circle, a, b, and open circle, 2, horizontal line, open circle, 6. By open, I mean not filled in. It's a circle, it's not filled in. Okay. So, 2. A less or equal x less than b, and as a specific example, 2 less or equal x less than 6. <coughs> So how is this distinct, different from the previous one? X can be equal to 2 or A. Correct. So now we are including the left endpoint. It is included. So this is, this is the, logically because it says 2 less or equal to X. So if you were to replace X with 2, you could ask yourself, self, is 2 less or equal to 2? Yes. Okay, so the way that you visually indicate this is like this, as follows. So notably, the distinction is that the left delimiter is now square parentheses. And again, for those of you who like to know the proper name, the proper name for that is bracket. <coughs> the way that you denote this as a plot is when the when the endpoint is included, you fill in the circle. So a to b two to six. Okay, next. A less than x less or equal b 
2 less than x less or equal 6. Okay. So I think that I hope I hope that the pattern is starting to become clear. So how is this different than the previous one? How is it? Yeah, so now we're going to include 6, but not 2. Okay. So a to b including b 2 to 6 including 6 A to B two to six. Okay, who can predict the future? Which one's coming next? <laughs> okay. A less or equal X less or equal B two less or equal X less or equal six. A to B, 2 to 6, A to B, 2 to 6, okay, so as a matter of jargon, just the way you say these things out loud, is that these these circles that are not filled in are said to be open whereas the ones that are filled in are said to be closed for this reason for this reason intervals such as these are referred to as open intervals and intervals such as these are said to be closed intervals And then the ones in the middle are said to be half open or half closed. So now, for those of you who might get the thought that you want to go take some more math classes, maybe, you know. An instructor can dream. Uh, this might, this discussion so far might lead you to believe that all of the subsets of the reals are either open or closed or something like that, but that's just not true. Uh, subsets of the reals can be open, they can be closed, they can be neither one of these, and they can be both. So that that's the subject of of a math joke for math for for math majors. If you know any math majors, you know you could tell them. You could tell them the following joke. You could say, subsets of the reels aren't doors. And they'll just have a good laugh. <laughs> have a good laugh. Because doors have to be open or closed. But subset, subsets of the reels have no such restriction. Okay, and that's also the subject of a further joke. And that is, <laughs> that is, consider, is that, you know, later mathematicians, a after the joke came out, you know, started coming up with, with, with spaces where all the sets are open or closed. <laughs> and such spaces are called door spaces. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so if you if you know any if you know any math people it's just it just kills every time. Okay. So besides these possibilities besides these possibilities we could do one like this. How about X is less than B? So notably, notably, uh, so to, to, to give an example, s less than, x less than 6, there's not something on the left, right, in comparison to the, to the in distinction to the previous ones. So that means that, uh, you know, 5.9 is fine, 5.99 is fine, negative trillion is fine, all the way to the left is fine for this one. Okay, so if you if you just really want to have something on the left, then you can write it in this way. Negative infinity less than x less than six. 
And then now you, now you have x between two things again, back in the comfort zone. So the way that this is denoted is in this way. So negative infinity to b. Uh, or, if you like, negative infinity to 6 for the specific example. And then the way you denote this uh, with a plot is like this. Okay. <clears throat> so, notably, and this is where the online, this is notable for the, uh, in the first place it's correct, but in the second place this will save you some frustration on the online homework, is that infinity is not a real number. It's not a real number. And that's why when you write this right here, you write open at infinity because it's not in the interval. It's not included. So in particular, this, the following statement is wrong in its own terms, meaning that it couldn't possibly be right in any context. Why could that not be right in any context? Because it has to be open at the infinity. Okay. So then, in particular, <coughs> intervals, notice that an interval is a contiguous subset of the reals, which means that everything in the interval has to be real, and infinity isn't. So it would be like you go to the grocery store and, and purchase, purchase a bag of oranges. And then you go home and you open it, and there's a potato in there. That's not right. <laughs> Under no circumstances is that going to be right. So then this is an interval of reals. You can't put an infinity in my reals. It doesn't belong there. <laughs> okay. Good. So any question about, about these things? Okay. <clears throat> so now setting that aside for a moment. Just like... Uh, we can take two reals, for example, and we can combine them together to make a new real. So, for example, you take 3 and 5, you can add them together and get 8. That's a new real. Terrific. You can take 3 and 5, you can multiply them and get 15. That's a new real. So, in the same manner, you can take sets and you can combine them in certain ways to make new sets. So, these are the algebraic operations on sets. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's the ones that we need for our class. The first one is called intersection. So, in Miss Harris's class, in seventh grade or whatever, when you did this, probably drawn like this, you draw the one circle, draw the other circle. <clears throat> I'll say that that first circle is set A, and this circle is set B. Okay. <clears throat> so now, what's the name for such drawings? Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams, right? So, which is to say that circle A, set A is represented by this circle. So, is that point in set A? Yes. Yes. How about that point? How about that point? Yes. Yes. Okay, similar remarks for set B. So, my question, the, the thing that we want to deal with is we want to deal with the intersection. The intersection. That is to say, we want all the points that are in set A and also set B. So, the ones that are in both. So, can you see it with your eyes? The points that are in both. So those are the points that are in both. 
this is denoted as A, and then that symbol, which is pronounced intersection, B. Okay, so then logically, intersection means and. To be in the intersection means that you are in the set on the left and the set on the right, both of them. So to give a specific example, if A is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 13, and B is the set 2, 4, 8, 16, so two specific sets here. then I could ask for you to compute the intersection, A intersect B. So this notation is set notation. The state of Texas assures me you're familiar with it. This just means that I'm talking about a set, like a container, a bag, that contains these, these things. Okay, so then now I want to know, please tell me everything that's in both. So there's one. One is an A. Is it in the intersection? No. Why not? <coughs> because it's not in B. It's because it's not in B. Here's two. The, and this two is in A. Is it in the intersection? Yes. Yes, because it's in B. Also. Okay. So then I think it's probably clear that the intersection is two and four. So, for those of you who like to know terminology, I'll call this a curly parenthesis, <laughs> but the real name is brace. Okay, so that's the intersection. Now, I'd like to point out something that I hope you noticed, and that is we talked about intervals carefully for an entire page, made a nice table there, and then I sidestepped and started talking about this thing. What do these have to do with each other? Well, an interval is a set. So now we're going to compute some intersections of intervals. Okay. So how about the interval um, negative 5 to 12 intersect, uh, how about 3 to 17? Okay, now, one set intersect another. Now, some of you can just do it in your head. I think that's terrific. For those of you that can, can you tell me the answer? Oh, four Not four, right? Because this means, for example, pi is in there. Right? So it's not just the integers. Three to twelve. Three to twelve. And, and what's open and closed and everything? Three's open. open. Twelve is closed. Okay, now, that's terrific. I hope you get accustomed to reckoning it in your head, but you won't receive credit if that's what you write. So, now, I'm going to show you how to, in the first place, how to understand that this must be the answer, which is, which is therefore important in its own right. In, in, and in that way. But just possibly as important is I'm going to show you how to get credit for this exercise. <laughs> okay? So the way that you answer this is as follows. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to refer to this as the red set and this the green. I'm going to draw two intervals. So this this will be the interval negative 5 to 12, and this one, the interval 3 to 17. Okay. Now, there's four numbers in play here. Negative 5, 12, 3, and 17. Of these four that I just listed, which one is the smallest? Negative 5 is the smallest. So I'm going to draw it up here in red. 
So negative 5, and I'm going to make it solid. Why am I going to make it solid? Because it's included. So negative 5. Okay, so now we remove negative 5 from consideration. There's now three numbers left, 12, 3, and 17. Of the numbers that I just listed, which one is the smallest? 3 is smallest. Which one of these will I draw it on? The bottom one. The bottom one, uh, because that's where the green set is. And do I draw it open or closed? Open. Open. Okay, so now we remove three from the from the list. So now the numbers are twelve and seventeen. So of those numbers, which one is the smallest? Twelve. twelve. Where do I draw it on top or bottom? Top. top. And I need to draw it to the right of these two. So twelve here. And I need to draw it closed. <coughs> Okay, now, of the numbers, 17, which one is the smallest? 17. <laughs> 17. <laughs> it's a little disturbing just to hear that sentence, huh? Okay, so right here, and then I draw it close. <coughs> so now, the red interval, remember, an interval is a contiguous set. So the red interval is all of this all of that business. And the green interval is all of this. All of that. So my question, my, my repeated question is which one is which one is the smallest? Which one is the smallest? Which one is the smallest? What that tells what that does for us is it, it makes sure that we have these numbers in the correct left to right order. Now you can't just draw them anywhere. They've got to be in the correct left to right order. Because now, what we want to do is compute intersection. So to be in the intersection is to be in both. So let's start over here at negative uh, 8. Is negative 8 in the intersection? No. no, right? Because I don't have a red point. So I don't have a red point, and I don't have a green point. I don't have, I don't have either one. So I need to start moving to the left until I start getting some points. OK. so. Do, 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 do. Oh, I got a red point. Does that mean I'm in the, I'm in the intersection? No, right? No, because I have to have a red point and a green point. Okay, so do, 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 do. Oh, I see. So right there, right there, if I move any at all to the right, I will begin having red and green points. So I, I don't have a green point there because that's open. Okay, so the way that you the way that you talk about that is you say ah well they begin there at three open, so now in 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 here do you observe that here I have a red and a green point. Here I have a red and a green point. So do 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 do. Oh, that's the last place I'm going to have a red and a green point. After that, I fall off the edge. And that's why the answer is three to twelve, not including three. Yes, including twelve. Any question about this one? <clears throat> this is how this drawing is what is expected and required to get credit on such an exercise. Okay, so what is the counterpart to um, intersection? What's the other one that's always talked about? Start with U. Union. So union visually so if here's the A set and this the B set in the diagram Then what does union represent? <coughs> Points that they meet in the Venn diagram. Not quite. So intersection means and. 
means and. Union means or. Means or. So in this picture, what's the union? No takers. <laughs> okay, so that that's a good guess. Everything except the intersection. So like the stuff in here and the stuff in here, but not that. Okay, that's a good guess, but that's not right. So it's it's everything in A or B or both. A or B or both, because and this is an important. Uh, this is a good place to bring this up, and that is in. In the English language, we have this word or, and it changes its meaning. The meaning of or changes its, changes its actual meaning depending on the context. So in, um, and, and it's not always clear, and you might not have thought about it a lot, but when you're, when your parent, you know, when you're a little bitty, your parent says, you can have an apple or you can have an orange. Almost surely that means you are allowed to have an apple or you are allowed to have an orange, but you are not allowed to have both. That's what that usually means in spoken English. In, in technical sense, or means you can have an apple or you can have an orange or you can have both. So the case where you have exactly one but not both, in a logical circumstance, that's called exclusive or. Exclusive or. And when you're dealing with sets, that's called symmetric difference. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about union. So I'm just, I'm just warning you that if you ever read a technical document or you talk to someone who's using technical language and they say or, be real clear about what or means. So the, so the way it's denoted is A union B. And it means all of these pieces. It means that, and that, and that. <clears throat> so with the same, with the same A and B as above, same. A and B as above. I could ask, well, what is in the union? No, I'm, what I mean is, is uh, these oh, ones. Okay. One through 16. Well, right. So <laughs> I just need to list them all out, right? So then not quite 1 through 16. Okay, yeah. Because right. some of them are not there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, then 8, 9, 13, 16. Any question about why that's the union? Uh, I'd like to point something out, and that is notice that 2 occurs in both sets. 2 is in both of them. Notably, in the union, 2 is only listed once. I do agree entirely that it occurs in both sets, but sets either contain exactly one copy of something or exactly zero copies of that something. You don't put multiple twos in there. That's not the way it works. Any question about this? So similarly, I could say, um, uh, let's do it like this. <clears throat> Two to 13, union uh, 5 to, I don't know, 19. So some of you are able to do it in your head. I think that's terrific. Can you tell me what the answer is? 2 to 19. 2 to 19. Opening 2 and close 19. Very good. And now, 
how do we demonstrate that this is the case both to ourselves and to the greater in exactly the same fashion as before. So just plot both intervals. Except now that I think you understand the principle, I'm going to do this far more rapidly. So if I refer to this as the red set, then the order of elements is that here is 2 and it's open, and here is 13 and it's closed. five and it's closed, and here's 19 and it's closed, okay, then to be in the union, to be in the union means you have one or the other or both. So back here at uh, negative million, we don't have either one. Okay, so we're not in the union yet, so do, 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 do. Okay, we got to two. Do you observe that if I move any further to the right, I will begin having red points? That's why the union begins at two, open. And then we have red points, do, 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 do. Oh, now we have red and green. Are we still in the union? Right, because remember, union means one or the other or both. So do, 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 do. Oh, ran out. I'm going to run out of red points. Still okay, right? So then do, 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 do. Okay, now I'm going to fall off the edge. Any question about why that's the answer? <clears throat> okay, good. So this is okay. Okay. So, now that we have the notion of intervals and intersection and union, now we can come back around to um, natural domain. And I can ask, x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 15x plus 50. I want you to find the natural domain. And I want you to give your answer as a plot and in interval notation. Interval notation. So both. <coughs> okay, so what do you think would be a good strategy? Factor, right? Because in the end, we know from, from analogous previous circumstance that we need to know when the denominator is zero. That's not any better. So in order to find out when the denominator is zero, we can factor. So we can factor it. So the numerator is as good as it gets. And then as for the denominator, can you think of two numbers whose product is 50 and whose sum is 15? 5 and 10. So x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 10. So I hope that it's clear from, from this representation which numbers are just simply not allowed. Which numbers are just not allowed. Negative 5 and negative 10 for the same reasons as before. So now I'm going to make a plot. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to make it, as for purposes of illustration, I'm going to make it almost right, but not right. So the way that we said this before on the first page is we said all x except 7. And now the analogous thing is all x except negative 5 and negative 10. So what that means is that we're going to take the whole number line we're going to delete two points. Everything else is permissible. So delete that point. Delete that point. 
Everything else is okay. And so we're going to delete negative 5 and we're going to delete negative 10. So what about this? So what specifically is wrong? All right, these numbers are not in the correct order. Negative 10 is to the left of negative 5. It's smaller. So this is, <laughs> this is almost right. <laughs> okay. So no, it should be negative 10 to negative 5. Okay, so does everybody see that source of error? So the other way, the other the, the language way to say it doesn't have that ambiguity, right? You could, if, if I said, give, say it for me in English, then you could have said everything except negative 5 and negative 10, and that would have been fine. But for the picture, the picture matters. The order does matter. Okay, now, in, inter in interval notation... What I'd like for you to observe is that notice, for example, if I select those two points right there, do you observe that I can draw from the one to the other? And if I select those two points right there, I can draw from one to the other without picking up my writing utensil. However, if I select these two points, I cannot draw from one to the other without picking up my utensil. I have to jump over the missing point. What that means is that that piece is contiguous and is represented by an interval. That piece is contiguous and represented by an interval. And that piece is contiguous and represented by an interval. So we have three intervals. How do we denote this in interval notation? Negative infinity to negative 10, yes. Union. Negative 10 to negative 5. Union. Negative 5 to infinity. Okay. Now, many students, when they see this, they sort of think, wow, that's pretty wordy. <laughs> and then my only response is, yeah, it is. <laughs> there is no shorter way to write it. If, if, there, if there were, I would show you first order of business. That would be the first thing, but there's not. Okay, so, so when I say that I want the answer in interval notation, that's how it has to be written. Okay, last example. Fourth root of seven x minus nine. I want you to find the natural domain and give it to me in plot and interval notation. So in the first place, is this one of the is this one of the varieties of radical that has a restriction? Yes. Yes. Why is it one of those radicals? Being radical. Because it's radical four. It's an even radical. And therefore the argument must be non negative argument must be non-negative. So as a result, what must be satisfied is 7x minus 9 must be greater or equal to 0. And now we want to solve for x. So how do we do that? Plus 9 over 6. Very good. So add, add 9. I did it. Now what? Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Okay, now my request of you is how do you write this in, in, as a plot and how do you write it in interval notation? So in interval notation first, how about that? What do you think? Bracket, mm -hmm. 9 over 7. Very good. And then to infinity. to infinity, very good. And then as a plot? Mm -hmm. Five or seven. Mm -hmm. Two. Very good. 
Okay, have a nice Monday.